Hey guys, this is OCB Communications, and this is my review of Hook. See, that's my name, Mike Brown. This is the Hook thing. This is actually a tape that my aunt gave me. So it's got nostalgia. It's got value there too. Now, Hook is a movie that you either love or hate. I'm one of the few that love them. I like the movie a lot. Uh, I know Matt doesn't care for it. Understandably, it's fine. It's fine, man. And I'm not, I know I'm not going to bash anybody who doesn't like, you don't like Hook, well fuck you. No, it's okay. Sorry. But, uh, maybe it's because it's just a movie that really, you know, it really helped me out. You know, as a kid, it inspired me to do a lot of things, to be, you know, you know, have that sense of imagination and wonder. And it really made me want to try to play to play Peter Pan in the school play, but... You know, sadly, because I was so social misfit and the medicine that I took at the time made me fat, then I was too chubby. You can't really cast a chubby Peter Pan. So, you know, and watching it again nowadays, it, it rekindled that, you know, childish flame, I guess, that this movie brings in me. So, I just think Steven Spielberg did a great job of bringing to life the world of Neverland in a way that had never been done before. It's an interesting idea. It's original to do a true sequel to Neverland. What the true sequel to Peter Pan? What happens if Peter Pan does grow up? Rob Williams is a perfect casting as Peter Banning, like Peter Pan. And uh, the rest of the cast is good. Maura Kelly, uh, Dustin Hoffman, the two kids, uh, Bob Hoskins is me. It's it, the score by John Williams is phenomenal. It's one of my favorite scores. It's one of the scores, first ever scores that really got stuck in my head as a kid. I'd go around going Great score by Hook. No, it's by Hook by Hook. <laughs> Great score by uh, John Williams. And just, I don't know, I mean, I, I still don't, it's Dustin Hoffman's most interesting role, role next to Little Big Man, in my opinion, because he gets so into it, and you don't even notice it's really Dustin Hoffman. And even when he takes the wig off, and he's some old guy, doesn't really notice, Dustin Hoffman went all out with this. One of my favorite moments is the one where he takes the gun to his head, and she he's like, I'm going, uh, it's over, it's over for Captain Hook, it's over, it's over. I'm going to kill myself, me. I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, Smee. I'm going to do it. Get you, get over here, Smee. Get over here, Smee. Stop me. Stop me, Smee. I'm going to kill myself, Smee. Stop me. Stop me. Go, you better come and stop me, Smee. I swear to God, Smee. I'm going to do it. Stop me, Smee. Stop me. <laughs> so he goes and stops him and then shoots the gun and hits the ship that's in the makeshift pool and it sinks. Rufio, you know, Rufio, I, I, I don't know, it's just, it, it's a great movie for, you know, it's just a, like I said, it's a movie that I used to watch a lot as a kid, I grew up with certain movies as a kid, Monster Squad, Goonies, Hook, Top Gun, Hunt for Red October, and a few others, those are the ones that I watched a lot. And Hook, you know, I watched it again, and it was the day that I watched all these other movies, you know, I watched... Same day, I watched Uncle Buck, and I watched Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, and then I watched Splash, and then I watched Hook, and then out of all those movies that I watched again, it really did bring back a lot of good memories, a lot of good things, and it, some emotions that I like to, you know, try to not remember. You know, I, I'll be personally, I gotta say that, you know, Jack really did, the character, the Jack really did appeal to me as a kid, because my father was the same way, you know? Always making promises he doesn't keep. And, you know, the fact that I had the balls to talk about this on a video on YouTube is is pretty pretty cool in my opinion. I, I'm, I'm going to, you know, personally, I just, I, you know, my dad, especially recently, you know, just thinking about it. Just the whole Jack when he puts the watch there and says for breaking, make, making promises you can't keep. And it's, you know, it's just... It brings back emotions in me, you know. Uh, my dad and I have a great relationship when we're together, and we do have good times. But there are moments where he just lets me down. 
And just like everybody and every every parent out there, they let you down. And, you know, he does that sometimes. So, you know, that kind of appealed to me, the fact that Jack was the same sort of kid. You know, dealing with the same things that I deal with, I dealt with when I was a kid. So, and then Robin Williams, I heard, you know, he had to shave all of his body hair off because he's all hairy man. He can't be hairy man as Peter Pan. So, I thought the casting was nice. I liked the Lost Boys. And also when I was a kid, I was an outcast. I was a social misfit. So, watching this movie transported to me in, to, to a world in Neverland where I could be a social outcast, where I could be a misfit, where I could be one of the Lost Boys, so to speak, and everything would be fine. You know, no one would condemn me for being weird. You know, because that's the normal place in, in Neverland. So, you know, there's that. And uh, I think it's exciting. I mean, Julia Roberts is good as Tinkerbell. Uh, Hurt you wanted the bigger, bigger part on the poster. That didn't work out. Drew Struzan's like, no, sorry. So, you know, I understand why people don't like it. It's a bit long. But, you know, I, I just thought I liked the whole... It's, a, it's all done practically. There really is not really... I don't think there is any CGI in this movie. And you got beautiful map paintings, you got beautiful sets, long location shots. The scenes where Peter, when, when, the scene, when, uh, you figure out, you know, Robin Williams, and he finds this happy thought, and he finds the bear, he's like, Teddy. You know, then he finds the thimble, and then everything, the revelation, and then when he finds his happy thought, he's like, I found my happy thought. Daddy. I'm gonna be a daddy. And then he just flies up in the air, and that score is just phenomenal by John Williams. And then he just flies backwards and forwards, and even in that ridiculous getup, that was a very, it was one of the best scenes of flying that I've ever seen. You didn't see the wires, didn't see anything, it looks so seamless to me. And then when he does the whole thing, when he cuts out the, the, th the, the part of the ship and throws it down, then he flies in. You know, it's nice. The whole thing was talking to Peter, talking to Joy Roberts, and she turns big all of a sudden for some reason just to get that wish to kiss him, and and she does it. And then, I don't know. But that scene was kind of like, I didn't need that. Why? That Just for Joy Roberts to grow big and wear a sparkling dress for a second? There's some problems I have with the movie. That's one of them. The length is another. Uh, the baseball scene is, is, is a really nice scene, too, because the way that... The little girl, the this sister of Jack, she goes in and is like, "Run home, Jack! Run home!" You know, and then they, the guys screw up, the pirates screw up, and they say, "Run home, Jack! Run home, Jack!" It's like, "Run home, Jack! Run home!" They're like, "No, no, no, no! You've got it backwards. Turn it around. Home run, Jack! Home run, Jack!" Home run, Jack! And then he hits it and just sails that ball. And that's when it actually hits Robin Williams on the head. And then he sees in the water, he sees a young Peter Pan and grabs the ball. That's when he noticed where Peter Pan was living in the in the treehouse and remembers everything. Because I guess you know it's it's. You see, before this, before Hook came in and took his kids, of course, that's what happens. Hook comes back and takes his kids to Neverland. Because he's always, he's just this really busy business guy. And even when he's supposed to be on vacation and visit his, really it's his, sort of really it's his mother. Because Wendy, you know, played by uh, Maggie Smith, she actually took him in. He was an orphan. You find out in the story that his mother, he ran away from his mother because he didn't want to grow up. He didn't like the idea of, you know, being alone. or I, it, it, He didn't like the idea of, you know, growing up. So he ran away as a little baby and then Tinkerbell took him to Neverland. So he kept, he kept visiting Wendy in the window and she kept getting older and older. And uh, then... The whole business type thing, you know, he got too involved in the business that he didn't show up to his son's baseball game, but he showed up to his uh, daughter's Peter Pan play. 
And then he's taking phone calls even in the play, and he goes in and he sends one of his cronies over there to film, videotape the game, which is an insult to your kid. And he comes back, he's too late. And then, of course, his son is upset, and throwing things in the airplane. And when he gets to England, you know, it's supposed to be a whole big thing for Wendy. They're going to honor her in some uh, big extravaganza. And uh, he basically doesn't, he's just all into the work mode. He's like, what do you mean I lost that? You see, because he lost a big deal. And uh, Morver Kelly, his wife, actually gets involved and grabs the phone and throws it out the window. Because they were getting an argument, and he's like, Do you just quit it? You know, just be quiet. And poor phone call here. It's just, it just, you know, it's, it, you know, and then when he figures out that he's Peter Pan, and, and he, he learns how to fly, crow again, and to fly, and to fight, it's really what it is, honestly, is him finding that inner child, that sense of, that imagination, that sense of wonder, that, you know, the, the thing that, you know, he became something he was not when he grew up. He let everybody just, you know, it just became part of the norm, you know. And, you know, the whole Peter Pan, I'm never going to grow up. And he grows up, and then he just becomes a normal workaholic businessman. And, you know, doesn't really seem, doesn't really remember or even think about those times where he was some, you know, mythical figure, of course. But really what I think it is, it's like, Peter Banning is his life is in turmoil. His family life is in turmoil because he's putting his work ahead of of his family. Then when his family is kidnapped and when his kids are kidnapped and sent to Neverland by Hook, then he has to go over there and save his kids and bring his family back. And in order to bring his family back into a cohesive unit and for things to be better, for his relationship with his son to be melded, mended, and all these things to come together, he has to figure out. He has to find that happy thought. He has to stop worrying about all these deals that don't happen. He has to stop worrying about this competition he's having at work. He's got to stop worrying about those things. And start caring about things that are important. His family and finding whatever happy thought that makes him happy that gets him through the day. And you have a good fight with Hook and, and you know, Rufio actually gets killed, which I think is kind of ballsy. It kills a kid. I mean... All the other Lost Boys don't get killed. I don't know. I have a problem with the Lost Boys' use of weaponry. It seems childish and corny and like three ninjas type shit with tomatoes and beans and they're slipping and falling. And then the guy who turns into a cannonball, a little roly poly ball, and knocks him over like bowling pins. So I, 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 I understand the problems with that. But I think this is actually, honestly, one of my favorite Robin Williams films. I like toys too. Toys is a great sense of wonder and a great sense of imagination as well. So, Hook, just in the whole, but the, if it's the biggest problem, the ending, you know, the crocodile all of a sudden comes to life, I guess, and then, you know, Hook, you know, gets ready to kill Peter Pan, doesn't work, you know, then hits the, it hits the crocodile, and then some gas comes out, and you go, Roar, and then it breaks apart, and he gets swallowed, and you hear it burp. Which was an unneeded touch, Steven. I'm sorry, I did not need that. So, is it a perfect film? No. Is it, do I like the movie? Yes, I do like Hook. It's got a great sense of imagination, a great sense of wonder. It really puts you in that place that is Neverland. And what I want to say, and I like the whole idea of finding that happy thought, you know? And I got to be honest, you know, what what are your guys' happy thoughts? I mean, you, you, you don't you don't have to post them on the comments below if you don't want to. That's fine. But you know, I'm not I'm not afraid to tell you my happy thought. I mean, my happy thought that I think about when things aren't going too well is you guys. You know, my friends, subscribers, and all the great nice comments you guys leave me really help me out. Sometimes just one little nice comment on one of my videos can get me through the day. So, 
You know, that just makes me happy and feel good about myself. You know, I was talking to Matt and Neffrey. I talked to Matt last night. And that just all culminated into a day that I felt I accomplished a lot. So, you know, that's my happy thought. You know, go ahead and, and talk about your happy thoughts if you want. That's what I think is cool. You know, this is what I think Hook really is about. Finding that happy thought, you know, in your life. Whatever it may be, I don't care. It might be when you used to have your teddy bear or whatever. It, it doesn't matter what it is. Time with your family or, or, or time with friends or, or some movie you really like. It doesn't matter. I mean, I just want, you know, if you find your happy thought and keep it all through your life, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter if you get fired from your job, doesn't matter if you get lose whatever, it doesn't matter if something bad happens. Keep that happy thought. And you and you fly above your fly above your problems and leave your troubles behind you. And I just think that that's something that everybody should aspire to when they when they're young or old to find that happy thought that'll let you soar above you know any problems or any worries or any issues that you might have in your life and just fly just fly just fly away you know and just, just reach that apex that peak you know of potential so that's what hook inspires me to do you know keep my happy thought and you know fly above my problems so and leave them behind me so I whatever my problems are personal financial employ employment potential doesn't matter I got the happy thought and you know everything's gonna be okay so I agree the film that's the movie hook the whole idea of the movie that I like the idea like I said Peter Banning has to figure out has to find that other part of him in order to make things right. So it sort of takes a look at basically what is his family values? Family. Family is more important in your work. And that's something I will always stand by. Family is more important than your work. And it doesn't matter how old your kid is either. Your kid could be 21, 22, 18, 16, 18, 12, 8, 6, 4, 3, or 1 doesn't matter family is more important than whatever you have to do in your office or whatever you have to do when you're doing whatever you must at if you have a family you have to make time for that it's 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 something that is an absolute and that's something that just pains me because there are so many families out there that they don't do that. The big guy, big the dad is always on out on the run. He's always on the plane or whatever going somewhere because he's got to do some big business deal. And sometimes there are families that work it out. You know, sometimes that works. But a lot of the time what happens is there's too much separation and so the kid just feels bad. And then when the father does come or say things that don't happen it really hurt tears them up inside because they can they only see them for so long so that's you know what I think is important what hook tries to talk about too is an emphasis on family values you know whether it's hook stealing your kids away or whatever might happen don't lose that so basically you know I don't know how much more depth I can get into the film you know, it's I, I just have I have fun with the film. It's not a perfect film. The ending is kind of the crocodile thing was lame in my opinion. And the Lost Boys' use of fight scenes were kind of were kind of also lame. And then you know the whole thing with Julia Roberts all of a sudden growing big just so I can show off my literally pretty dress and then kiss Robin Williams is just I need it. But other than that, you know, besides a few scenes that could get cut out. You know, good editing, great score, 
and a great great sense of imagination and wonder that will never be repeated because nowadays everyone's just going to use CGI. So this film used mostly practical effects and matte paintings which are beautiful and nowadays it would just be CGI and it look like shit. That's my opinion. But anyway, uh, I guess uh, thanks for watching my review of Hook and uh, oh yeah, I gotta, if, if I was going to... If I was going to give it a rating out of four stars, I'd give it three. Three star film. It's not three and a half. It's not four. The th it's not three and a half because that ending just loses me. It loses me. I don't know what it is. The ending loses me. The depth of hook is kind of like... I mean, really. I can, you know, suspend my disbelief for a long time during that film, but... You know, and then he's gone, and it's just no. I needed, I need a gag that does not work. But that's, you know, if if Peter, if you know, if he was impaled underneath it, and the and the, and the crocodile didn't burp afterwards, and didn't really eat him, which makes no sense, then be fine with it. Back. That doesn't happen. Oh yeah, I forgot the dinner scene. You know, you gotta remember. You know, and your paramecium. You understand the paramecium? Birds of paramecium. Paramecium is a tiny single-celled organism. You know, you know. Robin Williams is perfect for this role. It's one of his best roles, I think. And I, it's, I think it's also one of Robin Williams' most cherished roles because he got to work with Steven Spielberg. But anyway, as much as I kind of don't like the guy after what he's done with Night Skies and Boulder Guys and things like that. He does know how he has never lost that sense of wonder and imagination no matter how old he's gotten. And I got I gotta give him credit for that. So basically, hook three stars out of four and uh, thanks for watching and I'll check you later.